Chrissy again on for part two of stress resilience. Um, I'm going to start with a Yerkes Dodson curve. Uh, so this is a curve about how we can maintain performance um, when we are exp experiencing stress. So the bottom here is the increased energy and the other axis here is improved performance. So if you see on this side here, I have really low energy, I have low stress symptoms, and I have really low performance. So for example, um, like say if I were giving this brief, I'll just use me as an example. Um, say that I'm not particularly interested in talking to you on this platform, I've given this brief a hundred times, who cares how good it is, I'm still gonna get paid. Um, so I don't have any stress symptoms and then I have low performance. On this side over here, I have high energy, so I have a lot of, a lot of stress symptoms. I'm stressed out, if you could say. And then I also have de decreased performance. So this would be someone who maybe during recording this brief would like start over and over and over again and then obsess over little things like where this piece of hair came from or this zit on my chin. Um, I don't really understand if they're going to see anything in my background. This kind of thing where, oh, I thought about all the times that I messed up this brief in the past and that person didn't like me. I have a lot of stress symptoms and they are, they are uh, making my performance low. So the middle part here is where we have our optimum performance. And this is for everyone. I have stress symptoms, but they have they are working for me in the moment. I care about the material. I want to deliver my job in an effective manner. I enjoy trying to help people. I know that I mess up sometimes, but I also have done some things right in the past, so I'm going to remember those and let go of the things that don't help me. This is your area of optimum performance, okay? When I, so my first career, I was a public school teacher. So in the classroom, for example, this was the person that like would put their name on the test and then turn it in, like barely could open their eyes to stay open during class, um, didn't care, so they had low stress symptoms, and then they had low performance. This person over here would be the person in class who answered every single question correct. They knew everything backwards and forwards. They would check on things over the weekend and come in with new interesting facts about the subject matter and they would have so much stress under the test that they would fail. And this here would be the area of optimum performance where this person says, hey, I know what's going, coming towards me. I've trained for this. I'm prepared and I will rise to the challenge and my body's response with the rapid heart rate, with the increased breath pressure, with the nervousness pulsing through my veins, this is my body's telling me I'm ready to rise to the occasion. So this is what happens with stress, and we kind of want to, want to uh, strive to be in this green zone on the York Stodson curve. So that's not always easy to, to, uh, to do though, right? You can't just say, oh, I want my stress symptoms to work for me. Um, I, I want to go ahead and do that, right? So let me talk to you about two other factors with how we can control our mindset so that stress works for us, okay? I have my little whiteboard here. It's not dirty, this is a piece of marble, okay? Yet uh, necessity is the mother of invention. So I have a relatively um, normal amount of stress, like normal military stress, okay? And then I have low resources. So I have more stress in my life than I do resources. I feel like during this pandemic, I can't go and see my friends. I can't go to the places I enjoy. I can't further my career. They move the test dates. I can't PCS to my new uh, station. There's a lot of things in my life and I feel like I have no resources to help me. So in that situation where your stress is higher than the amount of resources you have available to you, that will register in your mind as a threat. It's a threat to me that I have so few resources and my stress is so high, okay? So let's flip that around a little bit. However, if I have the same amount of stress, but I have a greater amount of resources at my disposal, I ran out of space. 
stress, but I have a really good amount of resources at my disposal. That will then register instead of a threat as a, anyone get it? As a challenge. It's a challenge because I know that I have several people that I can rely on when I am experiencing this amount of stress. People, uh, organizations, um, things that I can do physically or mentally or spiritually that help me. Um, so think about the ways that you can use those resources. There's another um, model that I can show you. And we should all have several of these at our disposal when we are experiencing stress or really before we experience stress, okay? These are the domains of resilience. Mind, body, spirit, and social. In the next video, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about, about the mind, excuse me. Um, like for example, uh, some people will say, how do you manage your stress? They'll say, I go work out. Okay, fantastic, that's great, um, that's wonderful. Eat right, get the right amount of sleep, like all that stuff can, can lead to positive health benefits and help you with your stress management and increase your performance in areas not just with your physical performance. Um, social. So I have people at work I can rely on. I have people at my home that I can rely on. I have a, a church organization or a support group that I go to. That's all really good stuff. Um, the spirit, this is more where we will refer to our chaplains, um, but people even, even people who are not religious, people that can re uh, see that they have a purpose in life, they see themselves as connected to the universe, um, they see good things and bad things that happen with their, uh, with their connectedness with, between other people. Those are all ways that, that spirit helps. But we have to have a good, healthy um, balance of all of these. Um, so for example, I broke one of my ankles twice. Twice I broke it. And I broke them at the exact same time, um, both times I had a son, and he, when I was getting ready to wean him, I broke my ankle. And then four years later, I had another son. And then right when I was getting ready to wean him, I broke my ankle again. Um, the problem is, is if we're all lopsided and I mostly just exercise to deal with my stress, if I break my ankle, I'm gonna have, I'm not gonna be as mentally prepared. I'm not gonna be as resilient to my stress if I only work in one domain. So consider yourself that you have all of these domains and that you work regularly for them. I'm going to talk a little bit more about how you keep your mind ready um, in stress resilience in the next video. See you for the next one.